Welcome back. Now let's continue our informal rotational review by talking about the other major concept I wanted to get to today, which is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia, which is typically denoted with a capital I. Now this always a uh, tricky concept to understand in intro to physics. It's typically given as the rotational analog of math. But let's just really look into what actually is moment of inertia. And to do that, let's just break down what moment of inertia means. In physics and engineering, a moment is just the product of one quantity times the distance that it, that it is from an axis. Like for an example, Torque is the moment of force. It's the product of force times the distance that force is from one axis. So let's keep that in mind. And inertia. What's inertia? Inertia is like the abstract way you can think about mass in a way. It's essentially the resistance an object has to changing states. Changing states can mean speeding up, slowing down, changing directions, etc. So with that in mind, you can think of the moment of inertia as an object's resistance to change its rotational state. Essentially, it just deals with how mass is distributed around an axis of rotation and how this distribution of mass will affect its ease of rotation. Now, let's just talk about, like, actually calculating moment of inertia. Let's say that we have our axis of rotation, just this point here, and we've got some body or some shape, but all the mass is concentrated in a single point or a single particle. In that case, the moment of inertia for just a single particle is just going to be the mass of that particle times the distance that mass is from that axis, squared, the distance squared. So I is equal to mR squared is just the moment of inertia for a single point mass. Now if you have multiple point masses, let's just say that we have a, another point mass here and a, another point mass here, in which case the total moment of inertia would just be the sum of all the in individual ones. So for a collection of particles, the total moment of inertia is just the sum of the individual moment of inertias. We typically say it's the sum over i of the i index quantities, essentially each individual mass and in distance. Now, what happens if you have what we like to call a continuous body, or just like a of solid 3D shape, like a sphere, or a cylinder, or a loop. In that case, you can say that for a continuous body, we can approximate that as just a body that's made up of an infinite amount of these infinitesimal point masses. In which case, if we're taking an infinite amount, or if we're making infinitesimal point masses, we can generalize this sum into an integral. So for a continuous body, we typically say that i is equal to the integral of r squared times the infinitesimal masses dm. Now, those are the equations for moment of inertia. Typically, or practically, what's going to happen is you're going to look up the geometry of the mass that you're dealing with, and based off that geometry, you can typically find the value of moment of inertia in a table. Now, there's one other idea with moment of inertia that I just want to touch upon, and that is called the parallel axis theorem. Essentially, let's just say that we have a generic shape or a generic object, and it's going to be rotating about this axis right here. I'm just going to call that axis A. Now, let's just say that this object has a mass m, and 
We know what the center of mass is, and we know where the center of mass is. And we also know what the moment of inertia would be if it was rotating about its center of mass. So we know what I center of mass is. And we want to know what the moment of inertia is about this axis. Well, we can find out what the moment of inertia about this axis is using the moment of inertia about this axis. Essentially, we can say that I, moment of inertia about our axis here, is equal to I, which is center of mass, essentially what the moment of inertia is if it was rotating about its center of mass, plus the total mass of the object times the distance between these two axes. We can call that h squared. Now, typically this comes in handy if you have a fairly common shape in which you can find the value of uh, the moment of inertia for that shape, but you're just shifting where that axis of rotation is. Okay, so let's call it a day there, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.